by all the Zero Force members. The first thing we're going to do is start by looking at the free body diagram, the whole thing, just to get ourselves into some sort of awareness of what's going on here. So here are my external forces, at which point you can say that Fx has to be equal to zero. We want to start looking at the members. To start looking at the members, you want to find Ts, like this one at J. If you consider the free body diagram of the point J, I've got JY, and I don't know what it is, but I don't really care, and IJ and CJ. Well, if you sum the forces in the x direction, IJ is equal to zero. So we found our first zero force member. The second place where you've got a nice T is at joint I. If you look at I, you've got EI going up, HI going to the left, and IJ, which we just found was equal to zero, going to the right. Well, now both of the sums of the forces for both X and Y, I can say EI has got to be equal to zero, and HI has to be equal to zero. So now I've found three of my two force members. If you look at the joint at E, this is not your traditional T in that the BE does not come off at a right angle. I've got CE and EH, and I, in your free body diagram you'd still have EI, but EI was just found to be equal to zero. Now if I sum the forces perpendicular to member CE, or CH, or EI, or EH, this is an H, along that line, I know that whatever's not along that line is going to give me BE is equal to zero. All of your forces have to line up, so I could sum them in the X and the Y direction, and you'd see that BE has to be equal to zero. But if you orient your paper crooked so that CE and EH lie along the X-axis, you can show quite quickly by the sum of the forces perpendicular to that line that BE has to be equal to zero. Now if I look, keep going, look at the member at F, I have FX, which is equal to zero, and FY, and F. G and A, F. You can say that F, G has to be equal to zero. And the last joint I want to look at is G. If you look at joint G, you get G, D up, F, G, which we just showed was equal to zero, P, and G, H. So by the sum of the forces in X, G, H has to be equal to zero. So I found one, two, three, four, five, six of my members in this truss are zero force members. This is equivalent to statically this picture I've got here at the bottom. This is statically the same. Now, clearly, if you wanted to drive across this truss, you might be happier driving across the top one. But from a static standpoint, this truss at the bottom is exactly the same as the one at the top. You have a lot fewer members, but you'll have exactly the same loads in each of your members. What does this mean for you? Well, Clearly, I had set this out before I did this little video, and I knew which joint to go at next. But as you're going through your trusses, what you'll want to consider is looking for things like T's. Anytime you have two members that come across like this and one, a third one ending at that joint, as long as there's not a, a load applied at that joint, you know that this one has to be equal to zero. Now, if you come in here at a T like I have at... G, but I have an applied load P, now I cannot know, I, I know that in fact that one's not going to be equal to zero. So that's how you find your zero force members. Step through them one at a time, looking for things like T's and other unopposed members like the one here, and you, you can figure out what, which ones are zero. Make sure you double check in your project that you do not have a bunch of zero force members that are clogging up your understanding of what's happening in your trusts.